Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to be talking about Dungeons and Dragons and the film Dragon Slayer 1981. All right, now the film Dragon Slayer 1981 um, is without a doubt the most Dungeons and Dragons movie ever made by Hollywood, without a doubt, and that certainly get, that certainly includes the movie Dungeons and Dragons. There are actually uh, quite a few Dungeons and Dragons movies. There's animated ones, there's live action ones. Of course, there's the Dungeons and Dragons 2000 film. It did not do well. It did not do well commercially. It did not do well critically. And it wasn't a fan favorite. Like, it just didn't, it didn't, uh, it didn't click, right? Um, Dungeons and Dragons, the Dungeons and Dragons movie is, uh, it's the holy grail of hope for all Dungeons and Dragons DMs and players, uh, or many. And, um, but the reality is there is a Dungeons and Dragons movie that exists that's good, that did well at the box office and did well, um, uh, critically and, and also was very much a fan favorite and that is Dragon Slayer 1981. It is Dungeons and Dragons through and through. All it's lacking is the official seal. It's very Dungeons and Dragons. There are a few things in the movie that don't fit Dungeons and Dragons exactly, but the vast majority does. Uh, my point today is I really think that every dungeon master should watch Dungeons and Dra should watch Dragon Slayer 1981, uh, and to, and you should be aware of the main number one lesson that N Dungeons and Dragons lesson for players and DMs that this movie teaches. So what I want to do is uh, go over the story of Dragon Slayer 1981. This does contain uh, spoilers for the movie Dragon Slayer 1981, and then I want to give you the one main message that really is helpful to DMs and players from Dragon Slayer 1981. All right, so let's talk about Dragon Slayer 1981. So this is the story that's contained within the film. All right, so basically, uh, it's really, and it's even just talking about the story really helps you understand. It's This is every DM content. Every single DM needs to watch uh, Dragon Slayer 1981 because it gives you the structure of a Dungeons & Dragons story, right? So within the film, you have three different groups. You have the royalty, you have um, the ma uh, magic users, and you have the peasants, right? Like the, yeah, the peasants is the best way to say it. All right. So basically, um, the royalty is King Cassiodorus. So King Cassiodorus rules Earth, um, uh, which is U-R-T-H in the film. And, um, and basically, so King Cassiodorus is, uh, is the king of the realm, right? And he has a captain named, uh, Tyrion. Tyrion is, uh, very aggressive, very capable, a very dangerous, and in this movie, he's really a villain, right? Uh, and King Cass you'll see why in a minute. King Cassiodorus is pretty villainous, too. Uh, but King Cassiodorus has an innocent daughter who's not part of his villainy named Elspeth, Okay. So that's your royalty uh, layer, right? Next is the magic user layers, okay? Now, the movie um, presents uh, the traditional image of a wizard, which is Ulrich. And Ulrich is like, he, he's like an 18th level wizard, okay? He's got everything. He's got, he knows every spell, he's powerful, he's respected, the whole nine, right? But he's also very old. He has an apprentice named Galen, okay? He also has an assistant named Hodge, right? Uh, and then, so, and that is the magic, the magic user layer, okay? Last, you have the peasants. There's two peasants that are representing the movie who are kind of the key elements for the peasants. Valerian um, and uh, Simon, who is Valerian's father, okay? All right, so the movie starts out with Valerian, uh, this peasant, going to Ulrich and saying, listen, Ulrich, there's this dragon. This dragon is, you know, has been... Um, the people are, are sick of dealing with the dragon, okay? And the dragon is Vermithrax. So the the realm that King Cassiodorus rules has a dragon named Vermithrax, right? So now, the reason why the peasants are going to the magic user, who did, by the way, the magic user is independent. The magic user does not work directly for the king. The magic user can, has been tasked at times by the king and has also been commissioned by the king. But, but there isn't a relationship between the magic user. There isn't an ongoing relationship between the magic, magic user and King Cassiodorus's court, right? So basically, um, so Valerian comes and says, Ulrich, you gotta, you gotta take care of this dragon, right? 
And the reason why is King Cassiodorus, who should be protecting his realm from the dragon, has given up that task. King Cassiodorus sent uh, more than one, sent several different um, dragon slayer uh, teams to kill the dragon. And they all utterly failed. And the last one angered the dragon, Vermithrax. And Vermithrax actually built it, uh, destroyed an entire village, right? So the king said, you know what? Let's stop this noise. What we'll do is we will we will present every single year um, one young lady to the dragon. The dragon will eat that young lady. And, um, and then the dragon will leave the kingdom alone for one year. And the dragon took this deal, right? Now, uh, the way King Cassiodorus stole, sold this to the people was King Cassiodorus said, the young lady who will be who will be um, chosen to be eaten by the dragon, that name will be uh, pulled up. It will be drawn. There'll be a random drawing, and so all the women in the all the you know adult age women in the um, in the kingdom, their names will go into the bucket, and uh, all the young ladies, like the college age ladies of of the kingdom, their names will go into a bucket. And then one will go pulled out, and then uh, that person will be killed. Right? That person will be given, will be sacrificed to the dragon for one year of peace for the kingdom. Right? So Valerian goes to Ulrich and says, "Listen, I want you, the the magic user, to kill the dragon Vermithrax because this cannot stand any longer." Right? So um, Tyrion shows up right at this same time, and Tyrion goes, "Hey, Valerian, you should not be trying to commission." The, by the way, all the peasants took up took up an offering, and they offer up their meager offerings to Ulrich, right, the wizard, right. And uh, Valerian shows up at the same time, and he goes, "Hey, this is this ain't this ain't kosher, right? You can't." Says to Valerian, "You can't ask the wizard to do this." And the reason why is we got to deal with the dragon that's worked for years. It's fair. It's good. Everybody's safe. Don't go poking the bear, right? No pun intended there. Like he's like, uh, you know, don't don't. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? So, um, and, and also, and then he, and then Tyrion insults, insults the old wizard and says, you know, by the way, this, this old man, he can't kill the dragon because all of his, all of his magic is just really tricks and, uh, you know, tricks of the light. It's, it's not real magic, right? So, uh, Valyrian, so, and uh, the, and uh, Tyrion then actually gets in the face of the wizard and goes, just admit to her that, everything you do is really just foolery, right? Like, it's, uh, shenanigans, it's, um, you know, it's, uh, it's magical, it's, it's sleight of hand, right? It's not actually real magic, right? And Ulrich is like, hey, you want to test my magic? Take this dagger and stab me right in the heart, Tyrion. And, uh, so da Tyrion, uh, grabs a dagger, stabs Ulrich, the wizard, right in the heart, and Ulrich immediately dies, right? Galen, Ulrich's assistant, he's a young man, and uh, he has learned everything he could from Ulrich, and he's a pretty powerful wizard at this point. But he is—he's at the end of his apprenticeship. He's like almost, almost ready to go out on his own, right? Well, he's shocked by the death of his of his um, his master. Uh, Ulrich's assistant Hodge is another old man, just like Ulrich. And this assistant, what he did was he would he would he did everything for the wizard that wasn't attached to magic, right? So he would, like, literally, like, do his laundry, cook for him, um, and then he also did tasks that the wizard needed done that were not being completed by magic. Oh, Hodge is a really interesting character. I really liked his character, and I actually think this is something that, that could be added in D&D. So, so at this point, Hodge and, um, and Galen survive Ulrich the wizard, okay? Ulrich the wizard is dead, um, and basically the entire group is dispersed and Galen runs after Valyrian who's gone back to the that, back to their village with with their commission in hand and Galen says listen give me the commission I will take care of this dragon right and Valyrian doesn't like this idea she's like you're just an apprentice uh, by the way I just said Valyrian and I said she Valyrian presents as a man but she's actually a woman the reason she presents as a man is is because she doesn't want to be put into the lottery and possibly eaten by the dragon, right? It, about halfway through the movie, um, Valerian actually comes out, um, actually 
displays her chosen displays her birth identity, which is displays that she's a woman, right? Uh, and then, um, and then you know, drops her identity as a man, Valerian. Okay. Um, and by the way, her father Simon is supportive of this because he doesn't want her to be eaten by the dragon either, right? So it's really kind of an interesting aspect of a 1981 movie, and I thought it was handled really well. Um, I'm still learning about that kind of stuff. If it wasn't handled really well, let me know in the comments. I, I, I'm always looking to understand that kind of situation as, as best as possible, right? And, and and I know there's complexity around it, right? And that different uh, communities have different answers for that kind of thing. I thought it was really well handled, um, but I'm more than willing to hear in the comments if, if there was a way that I could have been handled better. Right, so, so basically, at this point, Galen takes the job of slaying the dragon. Okay, then Galen and Valyrian uh, and Hodge all travel together to to, Vermith, to to Vermithrax's cave in a mountain range. Right, and everybody knows where Vermithrax is because he receives uh, sacrifices once a year, every year. Right, so everybody knows where you know where Vermithrax is at. It ain't hard to find him. Right. So Valyrian, uh, Galen, and Hodge all travel together, and uh, and along the way, Tyrion finds out that Galen has picked up the quest to kill Vermithrax, and so Valyrian and so Tyrion, um, King Cassiodorus's captain of the guard, he goes and directly confronts uh, Galen, Valyrian, and Hodge's party, and out of that inner encounter, Hodge is killed. Okay. Galen finds Hodge dying, and Galen goes to Hodge and says, "What happened?" He goes, "Hey, you know, Tyrion killed Tyrion. Uh, ki Tyrion struck me with a sword, uh, struck me with an arrow. Sorry, and um, and listen, here is uh, Wizard Ulrich's uh, cremation dust, like the 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 ashes from his cremation, right? And he says, "Hey, here's here now. What you need to do is, and the master." Wizard Ulrich said that his his ashes should be spread over a lake of fire, right? A lake that is burning, a lake of fire. And uh, Galen's like, a lake of fire? I've never seen a lake of fire. And he's like, nor have I. So, you know, and so it's kind of a mystery. Then Hodge dies, right? So uh, Galen is very sad. He's lost his uh, he's lost his master, and he's lost his master's assistant. And he's the only remaining magic user in the um, in the realm, okay. Now, one of the things that that uh, that Valerian, Valerian is coming into his own, and he is powerful. He knows spells, right? But one of the things he's realizing is that their magic has different parts. It has the learnings and the spells that you've learned. It has your uh, and basically that's a big deal. You have to have the spells. You have to have the components, all that. And then, in addition to that, it has um, natural talent for for working the spells. And then additionally, the, the the wizard Ulrich had a powerful amulet. It's a magical amulet with a magical stone, right? And Valerian finds that he can do any magic he wants as long as he, he leans on the stone. Now, this frustrates him because he's like, I should have enough natural talent to do this on my own. But, you know, but he keeps having to lean on this this magical amulet, which really frustrates him, right? So, at the, uh, so he's going along. Valyrian and Galen take back up the journey. They go to Vermithrax's cave, and um, Galen th then, you know, does one of his spells, and he uses the magic amulet. And what he does is right at Vermithrax's, and so he looks at Vermithrax's cave, and he says to Valyrian, you know, is Vermithrax down there in the cave? And she's like, yeah, go on down there, you know, get out your wand and kill him. And Ver and uh, Galen's like. Mm, I don't know if I want to crawl down to a cave. And so what he does is he, he uses a spell, a mighty spell, and he avalanches rocks from the top of the mountain and covers the entrance to Vermithrax's cave, right? So now Vermithrax is, is, is trapped, right? So um, King Cassiodorus here, and then, oh, and then uh, Valerian and Galen go to the village and they celebrate with the people, and the people are so excited, right, that the that Vermithrax has been trapped, won't be able to get out of the mountain, and Galen has defeated Vermithrax, right? Well, King Cassiodorus comes along, and he's like, uh, and he says, hey, come from the village, 
and come talk to me. So he calls Valerian and Galen, and uh, they go to the king, um, and the king says, thank you for defeating defeating the dragon. Um, and, and Valerian and Galen both kind of throw shade at the king, and they're like, well, we did this because we had to. And the king is like, I don't know, really, really know what to do with this because I had a good situation set up. And there's words between them, and then the king is like, forget this, even though you trapped the dragon, I don't care, I'm imprisoning you, right? And so, uh, and one of the reasons why King Cassiodorus does this is he sees the magical amulet that Galen has, that Galen's wearing. He seizes the magical amulet, incredibly valuable piece of uh, magical item, and he begins experimenting with it, right? He also throws Galen and Valyrian both into jail, right? Um, at this time, um, the princess Elspeth goes to talk to Galen, the, uh, the, the, the apprentice in, uh, the, uh, in, in the dungeons, right? Of the, of King Cassiodorus. And Galen is like, Hey, your dad's terrible. Uh, and, and she's like, no, he's not. I just want you, I came here to tell you, he really, he really struggles with, you know, my name being in the lottery and all the young women's names being in the lottery. And I don't want you to think that this doesn't weigh on him, that he doesn't pay an emotional price for this sacrifice. And, uh, and Galen goes, no, you're wrong. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. Valerian says, no, you're wrong. Um, you know, uh, princess Elspeth, uh, your father, your name go never goes in the lottery. Right. Um, and she's like, what? Right. So she breaks from Galen and, and Valyrian. She goes back and asks her father this, and her father's like, "Yep, you and all other rich young women, your never your name never goes in the lottery." And uh, and he says, "And that's the way it is because I'm the king, and these other people are nobles, and that's the way it's got to be, right?" Well, she, Elspeth gets very upset about this, right? At this point, Vermithrax breaks his way, the dragon breaks his way out of the out of the mountain, and goes and burns the village that with all the villagers, right? So Galen and Valyrian are in jail, right? The Vermithrax burns the village and then um, and, and then goes back to his mountain and the king is like, oh no, right? And so at that point, the king is frightened and he says, we have to immediately reestablish the um, the sacrifice, right? So, so get, you know, and Galen gives uh, Tyrion his captain of the guard command says, get everybody together right now, right? And I want you, you know, uh, and he goes, and let's do the, let's do the lottery drawing. And then let's put that young lady out to get eaten by the dragon, right? Well, Princess Elspeth hears this, right? And she does two things. One, she frees Galen and Valyrian from the dungeons. And then she uh, takes all the, all the, um, the tiles from the lottery bowl and replaces her name on every single tile so that only she can be chosen from the 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 uh, from the lottery, right? Her father, the king, like uh, you know, commands everybody to do the lottery. All the nobles, all the people are there. Elspeth's name gets pulled up. He immediately, the king immediately stands up and says, "That's a mistake, my daughter." You know, like he says, "You just read the name wrong. Let's draw a new tile." He realizes every name is Elspeth, and Elspeth comes up and says. Uh, you know, King Dad, King Cassiodorus, my father, I know you've been keeping me out of the lottery, so because I want this to be fair, I am going to go to the dragon, right? So King Cassiodorus is like weeps and, you know, says this is terrible, but he says, hey, Tyrion, my captain, go, uh, you know, go put her out, you know, for the dragon to get eaten, right? So at this point, uh, Galen and Valyrian, they run, they run immediately, right? And uh, they realize they have about two days before um, before all the preparations can be uh, done, and Princess Elspeth will be uh, sacrificed to the dragon. Right. So Valerian takes Galen to her father. Her father is a blacksmith. Galen and Simon, uh, Valerian's father, work together, and they form Dragon Slayer. The name the name of the movie is actually this super dope spear that Galen and Simon forge together. Galen uses his, uses his magical amulet, which he stole, which, um, which actually, uh, princess Elspeth gave to him, gave back to him. 
he channels a whole bunch of magic into this very, very well-crafted spear, long spear. It's like eight, eight feet long, it's crazy sharp, made out of iron. Like, uh, it's really, uh, uh, and it's pretty amazing, right? So they make this super dope dragon slaying spear, right? And they give it, and, uh, and, and then Galen magically infuses it, and Simon does everything he can to forge it well, and they forge this dragon slaying spear, right? Galen then goes, takes the spear, and goes to Vermithrax's uh, cave again, right? Cuts Elspeth free when he gets there, because Elspeth's tied up, right? And he's like, run away, you know, and he saves Elspeth. Valerian's there with him, and, Valer and, and Galen says, listen, stay out here, Valerian. I'm going to go into the cave, and this time I want to kill that thing directly with the spear, right? Now, this is the one thing that broke from Dungeons & Dragons. Ain't no wizard in Dungeons & Dragons going to be able to use a spear decently, right? Um, and that's exa and actually, it was pretty lame even in the movie. You're like, dude, man, this guy's been reading books his whole life. This don't make no sense, right? That's the one breach that this movie had from Dungeons & Dragons lore is, in Dungeons & Dragons, ain't nobody confused that a wizard is a fighter, right? And the, don't give me that... Uh, mixed level nonsense uh, that you know dual class nonsense that's weird all right so basically galen goes down he stabs vermithrax in the neck and the sword and the spear breaks off and it does not kill vermithrax and galen uses the la last bit of uh, galen then uses the magical amulet to shield himself from uh from vermithrax's uh breath weapon and actually uh and is able to escape the mountain alive okay but vermithrax is down there and vermithrax is wounded but he is healing and it is clear to galen and valerian that galen absolutely utterly failed to kill vermithrax right and so galen's very upset valerian's very upset um and they're and now this they're really upset because they know what's going to happen next Right, they've upset the dragon again, and the dragon's just gonna sweep out, go find another burn village, and burn another village to the ground, right? And kill all the people there, right? So, like, you know, they're very upset, they realize this is a problem. At this point, um, Valerian and Galen, you know, talk and they say, Hey, what can we do to actually what can we possibly do to fix this, right? And then Galen remembers that Hodge had told him, Hey, you have the master's ashes, spread the master's ashes on a on a lake of fire. And as soon as he says to himself, lake of fire, he remembers, right? And he remembers the lake of fire. And basically at that time, the lake of fire is where Vermithrax was in the mountain. There was a lake where he slept and it was burning from all of the dragon's fire breath, right? So Galen, Galen tell, tells Valyrian again, wait here. Galen goes down into the mountain, uh, splash and wafts the wizard's ashes over the lake of fire while the dragon is um, while the dragon excuse me while the dragon is in there uh, like recovering right. This green light wafts above the uh, above the the lake, and the green light manifests into a resurrected. Ulrich the Wither, Wizard, and he's very much Gandalf the White, like he's restored, he's got these super dope wizard robes, he's got the super dope wizard hat, and he's like, hey Galen, I'm back, and Galen's like, hey, the, you know, Vermithrax is about to come out, he's going to burn another village, I need your help to, to wreck this dragon once and for all, because I tried to bury him, and I tried to stab him in the neck with a spear I, that I forged, and none of it worked, right, so we got to do something. So uh, Ulrich is like, you're absolutely right. Here's what we're going to do. We need to go out of this mountain range and go farther down the mountain range and we'll meet this dragon at the top of the mountain, right? So that's exactly what they do. Valyrian, Galen, and Ulrich all go out of the mountain, go down just a few miles to, to, to bring the, uh, to bring the, to lure the dragon away. And, uh, and Ulrich says, the dragon's going to be able to sense that I'm, that I'm back and he'll follow me, right? As soon as he's recovered. And that's exactly what happens. Galen, a Valyrian, and Ulrich go out. They go a little farther down the mountain range. They go up to the top of a, of a mountain, and they choose their place on the top of a mountain where they will meet Vermithrax. Vermithrax comes out of his cave, flies around, 
um, and then immediately descends down onto uh, down onto the mountain range, doing these dragon sweeps at Valyrian, Galen, and Ulrich, right? And uh, he uses his breath weapon against them. Ulrich protects them from the breath weapon. And then Ulrich said, you know, when Ulrich senses that Vermithrax is going to make his final dive and kill them all, uh, Ulrich is like, listen, uh, I'm going to be put into danger. And what I want you to do is I want you to let me be put into danger. And I want you to get ready to destroy the amulet when the time is right. So Valyrian's right there near Galen. And what happens is. Uh, Vermithrax dives down again, snatches up Ulrich bodily, the old wizard, flies away with him, and then takes him up in the air and, and literally like lifts him up like he's going to bite him like a sandwich, right? And at this point, Galen, Galen and Valyrian are trying to figure out the right moment to destroy, uh, to destroy the amulet, right? And also, Galen is struggling with destroying the amulet because he's like... This is all, you know, my magic never really worked with anything but this amulet. And he's like, Valyrian, maybe I should keep it. And then I could fight just to, you know, and I could be Ulrich. I could be strong. And I can, you know, I can have good magic. And Valyrian, and, um, and Valyrian is like, no, man, you got, you definitely have to destroy this amulet. And then she says, destroy it now. And Galen's like, it's not the right time. Galen puts the amulet down on a rock at the top of the mountain. He sees that Ulrich has been, uh, you know, carried up into the sky. And when Vermithrax grabs Valyrian and is going to bite him like a sandwich, right? Uh, um, Galen takes the rock, smashes the amulet, right? And the amulet, which is tied through magic to the wizard, explodes, knocking Valyrian and uh, Galen down with magical energy and utterly tearing Vermithrax apart when the wizard explodes in unison with the magical amulet. So Ulrich the wizard serves as a magical bomb to literally uh, sunder Vermithrax's corpse. Vermithrax, Vermithrax gets um, gets cut in half by the power of the magical um, by the power of the magical explosion, and um, and Vermithrax's corpse literally tumbles to the ground falls down. Galen and Valyrian go down, and um, and King Cassiodorus, and uh, and uh, by the way, Tyrion, King Cassiodorus's captain, was killed by Galen right before Galen went into the, into Vermithrax's sorry, I'm circling back here. Uh, Galen killed King, uh, Tyrion, King Cassiodorus's captain, um, right before he went into Firmithrax's, um, uh, cave to kill him with the sword, with the, with the spear, Dragon Slayer, and the way that Galen killed, uh, and Tyrion just wrecked Galen, all right, he was, like, you know, using a sword against him, and easily defeated him, because Tyrion was a fighter, and, um, and, you know, and Galen was a wizard, and the only way that Galen was able to defeat Tyrion was... Tyrion was actually uh, was actually using uh, the pole, like this big, heavy pole, wooden pole, that um, that queen, that Princess Elspeth had been tied to, right? And so she, um, and he was using it uh, to strike at Valyrian with his sword, and um, and basically Galen couldn't get at him because he had this big clumsy spear. So what he did was Galen just actually put the spear right through the tree because it was magically sharpened and killed and right through the tree, you know, through the post and right through, uh, put it right through the post and right through Tyrion, right? So King Cass, so very, at the very, very end, Vermithrax, his corpse is on the ground, King Cassiodorus comes, uh, Valyrian comes, and um, you know what? I'm sorry. King Cassiodorus does not come to the to corpse. In fact, Galen and Valyrian go witness that Vermithrax is once and truly dead. The villagers come out, and the remaining villagers come out and see that Vermithrax is once and truly dead. And then Valyrian and Galen ride off together on a white horse that uh, that magically appears, and it's made to sense that like that that the wizard Aldrich was re resurrected as a white horse for these two. And so Valyrian and Galen uh, ride off together. 
uh, with the and and it, you're it's made to say that Galen will go off on his own and become a powerful wizard, the same way Ulrich was, perhaps or or Valyrian and Ulrich will make a life together without magic, because one of the things that's not clear is is magic still around without the magical amulet, and is and is Galen still magical? That question is left unanswered at the end of the movie, but. They all they both like see this magical horse, and, and it's pretty clear that Ulrich was, you know, was the horse, right? Very very interesting film, fantastic film. I absolutely love it. Uh, uh, it's a joy to share the story with you uh, as a dungeon master, uh, and this is something that every dungeon master should know. The thing that I think is the most beautiful lesson that any dungeon Dungeons and Dragons dungeon master should take from this film is that magic is incredibly hard to destroy and incredibly hard to defeat and it allows uh, it allows people who normally don't have the power to do something to do something right but it's incredibly difficult to control and it's and and cr and killing a magical beast is incredibly difficult right Galen tried to kill it with an uh, to, to trap it with a magical avalanche couldn't do it stabbed it with a magical spear that he and uh, Simon had forged and it was incredibly powerful killed Tyrion with no problems right still couldn't kill the dragon and the dragon had to be killed by all of Galen's force all of Lyrian's uh, smarts and courage all of Ulrich and, and Ulrich's resurrected body and mind and spirit it took all that to kill the Vermithrax the magical beast and so I think you know the 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 lesson that that dungeon masters should take away is you know the lesson that, that Dungeon Masters take away from this is that basically it's incredibly difficult to kill a magical creature and that magic is truly rare, truly special, and that it should be treated as such within the game. Uh, this is an absolutely fantastic movie. Every Dungeon Master should see Dragon Slayer 1981. It will absolutely help you, uh, help you uh, improve your game. That's my opinion. I'd love to hear your opinion. Let me know if you've seen the film and what you thought of it. Uh, please consider liking and subscribing. And have a wonderful millennium.